Thank you very much. Take a look at me. I look like a designer. I look like an urban planner. I've got the Theo glasses from Germany. It tells a story. But it hasn't always been that way. I used to be an on-again, off-again music groupie. Back when I was growing up in Calgary, I was 19 years old, and I was in love with a guitarist of a punk band. Every two weeks, I would go down to the National Hotel, and I would dance around in a grungy room, having fun, meeting people, and watch him thrash away at the guitar. Now, a couple years later, I moved to Vancouver, and once again, I fell under the spell of a musician. This time, it was the charismatic Chai Pig of the infamous SNFU, which probably some of you here know about. He was incredible to watch. It was all happening down in East Vancouver. There were so many venues down in there. You would see live performances beyond music. You would see spoken word. It was such an exciting time in Vancouver, the 1990s. And I look back at it now with both mixture of sadness because of some of what went on, but also incredible joy of having been able to be able to watch that. So after that, I got drawn to Halifax. Now, by this time, I'm older. My groupie days are well behind me. The glasses are now coming on my face, and I'm going to study urban design. And one of the incredible things that I would soon discover from my work at the, city, at the University of um, Dalhousie is through the innovation systems research, is the important role that music plays in shaping this city. All right, so let me generalize for a moment. Let's just kind of look at those things that attract people, because that's the question we were ultimately wanting to ask. What attracts people to Halifax? Well, when you look at big cities, those cities that are over a million people, you know, look at Toronto, you think of the skyline, you think of the redoing the waterfront, you're thinking of the museums, of course, Queen Street West and what's happening along there. In Vancouver, you're thinking of the seawall. When you think of Calgary, you're probably thinking of the big stampede. These are all banal kind of things that people connect with. Now, when we start to ask people here in Halifax what they think of this town, what we heard again and again from people who have chosen to live here is that it's beyond those things that you might hear at dinner parties here, which is the whole idea of oh, our Scottish heritage. I just love listening to Celtic music. And a lobster dinner, what could be better than that? Well, what we heard from these people we spoke to is that that kind of 1960s invented marketing speak was not why they chose to move here and not why they chose to stay here. In fact, no city should be held to task for those 1960 marketing messages. What we start to hear from people is again, what made them choose to move here. So one of those key things is we started to do research. And this is where we start to work with the Innovation Systems Research Network based in Toronto at the U of T. So we did a five-year study, and during that five-year study, we were trying to determine what are those key aspects that cultivate and stimulate innovation, but also generates economic growth. So what we did is we talked to 87 people in a wide variety of industries, both in music, architecture, uh, entrepreneurial startups, uh, urban design, architecture, and what was the central finding which surprised us is that again and again and again, people referenced that why they chose to stay here or move here was a couple of things. But the central one was our music scene. They felt encouraged by it. They felt connected to it. They were inspired by the social network that it created, the collaboration it fostered, the model it offered. I heard directly from a gentleman who was president of a marketing firm say, when his wife understood that there was popular music, such as the Bear McNeils and Joel Plaskett, together with the jazz festival, and I can also go to the symphony, she said, I want to live in a town that lets all that happen. What we start to understand is that we had something other cities were searching for. So let's stop for a moment. Other cities are searching for. We have Montreal. 
Montreal is one of the great music cities in this country. It has the Place de Spectacle downtown. Millions of dollars of infrastructure has been put in place to sustain their music business. They also have the Plateau. They have what's going up in the mile end with the fostering of affordable housing up there. That's helping stimulate and maintaining their music scene. But that's a city well over a million people. Now think about Halifax. It's a city of, well, we've just broken 400,000 people. Let's think of other cities of that size in Canada. Oshawa, nice place. London, no, I'm serious. London, Ontario, nice place. Victoria, nice place. But just think Halifax in that same. We punch so high above our weight. We create and innovate and stimulate the kind of music production as well as other factors in other industries well beyond those cities. Our city region here, it was found through our research and we heard through our qualitative analysis, is that people not only were drawn to that, who were in creative industries, but what also was a central finding that was exciting to realize is that industries well beyond traditional creative industries also mentioned that that was important to us. So here is a key aspect. What you need to have a music city are a couple of things. You need artists, performers, performances, check mark. You need to have a supportive and positive atmosphere from people like ourselves, hopefully in this room, who go to music events. You need to have a government with throughout the three tiers all supporting the music scene. And we have that, check. But the other thing is we need places where people can foster their talent, hone their skills, and break into the big time, if that's what they choose to do. So here, take a look. This is our present, this was 10 years ago, our spatial arrangement of the key venues. The tallest one in the middle there is Gus's pub. The why that's so important is it cultivates through having hundreds of events each year, hundreds of different acts performing. That gives a chance for somebody to perform and test if they're even interested in pursuing music as an avocation or a vocation. What's Interesting about this is today, a couple of those columns are gone. The Kyber Club, it's not there anymore. Hopefully one day, through some of the work being done, it will be done. But the Seahorse, the Seahorse is a medium-sized venue, and that's critical. Because as you go through that list, what we, have to, what we are understanding is that in a music city like we have here, is something that other places chase and desire. We already have it. A music city from its coal definitions is one that stimulates the economy and has support of the government. That's cold. One thing I found, you go to events like this. Now, this is, of course, not an <laughs> amateur performer, but someone of high skill. But when I would go to Gus's pub, I saw something there that I never saw when I was a groupie back in Calgary. You would see mothers, parents, and occasionally a grandparent in that audience smiling with pleasure because their young daughter is thrashing out and trying to be a post-punk musician. And I always got the impression that the grandmother would go back to tea later that afternoon or the next day and brag about how talented and how thrilled she was. That is part of our DNA. That is why I live here. That's why I chose to live here. And we can build on that. Gus's pub again. So quickly, I just want to go through what we need to cultivate a music scene here or any city is places of easy entry. Gus's pub is that place. You also need intermediate term, and we need to figure out how to encourage those. I have some suggestions coming up. We, we also need those places like the Marquee or the Metro Center, which are large, or Rebecca Cone, which are larger venues when people who have reached a pinnacle, such as Joel, can once a year or twice a year play in these larger venues and help um, keep the, the, his uh, buy in the city going. So I want to bring up some examples of places around North America who are doing this really well as far as claiming their music DNA. First is Austin, Texas. They have a festival, South by Southwest. It's very similar to my favorite festival here, which is the Halifax Pop Explosion. It's a great festival. 
But Austin City worked with the people at South by Southwest and make sure every year they can run that well. Not only can they run that well, Austin City Council makes sure that they can expand that. So now South by Southwest has a film program. It has a marketing commercial program. It has an urban design program that's all part of their music uh, and it's now two weeks long. The convention center commits each year to making sure that the music scene in Austin is integrated into their marketing for their convention center. They have positive music policies in their city. Seattle, Seattle created the moniker that they are the city of music. Well, they may think so, but I think Halifax is. <laughs> but Seattle, what they did is they did a report and they determined that their venues, their music production and their sales each year is $1.2 billion in Seattle's economy. Well, it makes sense to support it. They start to recognize that when people moved into neighborhoods, there was tension between existing venues and new construction. So what did they do? They created policies and noise bylaws to help encourage that that tension would be manageable and could help sustain the operation of that existing venue. I want to promote one of the wonderful things that they've done. And Champion Idea heard on CBC Radio last night. And that is, when they get off an airport in Seattle or you get off the airport in Austin, there's always somebody playing music who is local. They promote their city. You come out and you see someone, a local musician, playing for you. The idea I heard last night, and this is completely off topic, not completely, but someone suggested that as much as we respect our former prime ministers, the Pierre L. Trudeau should, airport should be renamed Leonard Cohen Airport. That's the kind of idea that I'm trying to encourage here in championing Halifax as a music city. Because this city is at a critical juncture. We have been a city for over 20 years with a moderately slow growth rate. In the last year and a half, we have doubled that growth rate to 2% annually. We are now predicted to be a city of 550,000 people by the year 2031, much earlier than the regional plan anticipated. We're also seeing an influx of redevelopment in our downtown core, as encouraged and as we all are desiring more people to live in our city center. It's a more resilient way to live. We're also being called out recently in a news article based in Toronto that they found the four cities that are the most desirable to millennials. Halifax is one of those cities. So how do we negotiate that? How do we make sure that we protect these venues that were already being perceived and actually in decline? If we're not careful, we could lose them. So one of those things is Halifax is increasingly assigning importance to this. And I've got to give props to council, particularly the championship led by Councillor Mason. So one of those things is we need to finish, they've already started, but finish a venue analysis and inventory and determine through that process what gaps may exist and how can we help fill those gaps venue-wise. We also need to come into place, we're doing right now three or four big, big plans, the center plan being one of them. How can we make sure that we instill in there policies that allow for land uses such as performance spaces such as recording studios, such as community hubs. We also need to establish and promote entertainment districts. This is key. We already have some of those being shaped and formed. As an example, we had one along Argyle. It's still there, but there's not as many music venues. What we're seeing, though, is those music venues moving up to the north end along Gottagen Street. So how can we work It's Gottage, if Gottage, one, let's have a conversation as a community, should Gottage and Street be an entertainment district? Should the live venues there be maintained and promoted? Those are the kind of conversations we can engage in. And this is one thing I want to challenge everyone in the room and encourage anyone here who is under the age of 30, and I think that's about at least 30% of the room here, which is awesome, and that is to get involved in the master planning going on right now for the Halifax Commons. A key kind of music venue that each city has that has a good music scene is an all-ages venue. And right now, we have a gap in that. We have a venue space that's in the middle of the commons that has occasionally run, been run 
um, with lots of events and then occasionally falling into less events. What we need to do, I would encourage us, is to have a conversation in that master planning process of could that become a community hub where people from the west and the north end and the south could all participate, and of course throughout the region, participate and enjoy concerts for all ages in the commons area and be part of the park programming. The other thing is a dedicated music a representative or um, a champion within the city hall, designating that officer so that every situation the city considers, they can start to incorporate that. A key one would be when the city does its tourism branding each year, that officer, that music officer, she would come along and say, you know what, let's make sure we're promoting our music scene in here because it attracts people, stimulates the economy and keeps our economic growth happening. So in conclusion, what I want to do is have you all acknowledge how important and encourage you to participate in fostering our city to be recognized and celebrated as a music city. I want you also to take a couple of times this year to go to a live music performance, to tap into your inner groupie and go out there and dance, thrash, meet people, and have fun. Thank you.